Oh, by the way, I just realized one thing. You know what? Since this watch has gotten so much popularity, I hope, I wish Cass would introduce one of this thing again, but instead of this profile, use this profile as the hit. That would be very, very cool. Anyway, let's have a look at this brand new Casio G-Shock, reference number GA-2100SKE-7AJF for this JDM version at least, which will retail at 15,950 yen in Japan. But since it is so popular, it sold out quite instantly, so I have to buy this from a reseller, which means I end up paying 16,800 Japanese yen, a bit more than retail, but that's okay because I checked with my G-Shock store, local G-Shock store as well, before I make that purchase actually. They say that this watch will be available at a retail price, cheaper, which is great. However, I have to wait next month for that. I don't have that amount of time. You know what? Just pay a bit more, get it quick, and secure a slot since it will be pretty limited locally as well. So uh, and I'm not going to risk it. So if you're on the same situation as I am, I would recommend you to do the same. Buy this watch from Japan. It is already re readily available. You're going to be end up paying a bit more. But since you are a viewer to the channel, remember, you'll earn an extra 1,000 yen discount on your first order if you use buy japan as your middleman to buy this watch from your japan auction basically decides where i buy this watch from so since you'll be buying this watch from your japan auction why not you know just a quick recommendations purchase one of these as well yellow band and bezel which is going to cost you like 30 bucks or black band and bezel which also going to cost you around 30 bucks perhaps cheaper so 160, 30, 30, you know, if you add up all the costs, it's still worth it in comparison to get the all black version, which is way better colorway. But you know what? This is pretty good as well. You could customize them. You get the best of all color. You get new box. So you don't have to abuse this transparent band and bezel as much. Since this is pretty collectible. And uh, if you abuse this, it will get yellow. So don't do that. Okay, let's just focus on the watch real quick. It is the first time ever a GA2100 was added into the Skeleton Color series that gave it this full gloss band and bezel. Is it good though? It is good but not to my expectation. Let me explain why, okay? The watch band is great. It was made out of polyurethane as being signed down here, PUR. So I could see, I could tell that it is the same material as any G-Shock that was introduced before, meaning it will get yellowed over time. There's that. Both sides go the same. The band keeper feature a matte finishing material, so that's okay. It uses the stainless steel buckle, which complement the entire colorway of the watch. I gotta say that, it looks very nice. Matching with the silver stainless steel screws and silver stainless steel buttons. Those aren't plastic with chrome painted on, those are actually stainless steel materials, so that adds up to the cost. And obviously it looks very, very nice, feels very good too. However, here's my problems. That is on the watch bezel. It looks great though, it has that gloss finishing, which matches really well with this. Mineral crystal, pretty scratch resistant, so that's good as well. However, since Cassie only applied that gloss finishing at the front and not on the back, it makes it look a bit muddy, it looks cloudy, it didn't look as good as the band. It didn't match, that's what I'm saying. And because of that, we can't have access, we can't see clearly what the casing are made out of. We know it is made out of carbon, but we cannot see the magnificent, the tough, carbon material that this casing was made out of so that is a bit of a bummer at least for me if only they use gloss finishing at the back though i think it will look much better but i'm pretty sure i could find a third party part change it up and have that same look so that's okay if that's it the casing of the watch was made out of carbon tough as metal lightweight as resin also cheap to manufacture as resin that's just my guess so we're getting best of all the world and because it is so tough, Casio managed to miniaturize the size of this watch, making it the thinnest G-Shock watch ever, except the fact that it is wrong. It is the thinnest G-Shock watch in production, but not the thinnest G-Shock watch ever. So let's go off a tangent real quick. Way back in history, with our G-Shock Perfect Bible. Before I get to that, let me put this on wrist just to show you guys how it fits on my skinny 15 centimeters circumference wrist. With my darker skin tone, I've been going to the beach quite often, so yeah, the skin tone got tan a bit. It didn't complement my skin tone as much, by the way. That's how I view it, so I'm pretty much gonna end up changing the strap to colored one 
so it will fit better. At least for the band, the bezel is okay. Now, ba get back to this magazine. This is G-Shock Perfect Bible. Released during G-Shock 35th anniversary, I believe two years, three years ago. If you are a big fan of Castle G-Shock, you gotta have one of this. So now let's skip all the way to the back to the year 2005 to release G-Shock watch to the months of November down here. Right, this is the first time we were cast into this a G-Shock call JW-056J. This watch has a thinness of 11 millimeters. This one in front of you guys right now has a thinness of 11.8. Not a big difference. All right. But the point I'm saying right now is that this watch has solar wave setter built inside of it. All right? And it is thinner than one of this. That tells me that Casio could add solar charging inside this watch, but they decided not to do so. So it got me thinking maybe because the cost might be too expensive. But guess what? Skip one year to the year 2006, they introduced another version of the same watch called G056. Same model, same dimension, also 11mm thinness, but without solar wave system function. This thing costs 12,000 Japanese yen, this thing costs 20,000 Japanese yen. So, there's a price difference of 80 bucks. So, let me ask you a question Are you willing to pay 80 bucks more for this watch but with solar and wave setter built inside of it? Comment down below, let me know. I'm curious. Me personally, I do think it's totally fair. Obviously, 80 bucks is not a big deal at all. But considering that this watch could last three years and the battery only cost me like one dollar, two dollar to replace it, you know, there's ups and downs in there as well. Plus, not having a solar panel inside of it, I do think that will help making the watch much more customizable, as being shown uh, from G Central, where you could paint to the watch face something that you cannot do with a solar wave set that you could G-Shock watch, kinda. This watch proved it, you could do it, but not to the point where you could fully color it, of course. Something that is not everyone gonna do, but for day-to-day -day wear, I gotta say, Casio could add a solar wave set function inside of this thing, they decided not to, and considering that this watch just like one year, over one year already available on the market, I think it's about time for Casio to do that. Just my opinion, by the way. So far, let's just enjoy what we have and if you are on the fence either you should be getting this watch or not, you know what, just go and ride ahead since the blackout version is still pretty expensive, a bit more expensive than one of this. I would recommend you to get this and then add up a black pen and bezel instead and check out both of them using Buy Japan. You could buy them from your Japan auction and that will give you much more values since you'll be getting new box, new watch, collectability aspects, so sure. That's one way for me to recommend you to buy this watch. One strategy at least. So go right ahead, check the link down in the description box, sign up, create an account and start shopping for yours now.